We know that vulnerable plaque identifies high-risk patients who need to be treated aggressively with medication. So we're going to talk here at CRT 2016 and look at the final results of IBIS-3 and the effects of high-dose rosuvastatin in non-intervene vessels of a uh, real practice population. And to do this, I am with uh, Dr. Hector Garcia, who is an MD and a PhD and an attending cardiologist at MedStar Heart and Vascular Institute, right here at your hometown. Uh, let's remind people about the actual, the full trial first before we get to the final results. Thank you, Rick, and um, you are very kind inviting me uh, for this interview. Um, yeah, so first I'd like to um, do all this commentary on behalf of my colleagues, actually now ex-colleagues back in, in the Thorax Center in Rotterdam, the Netherlands, where I was still three months ago. And uh, so we did this uh, EVS3 study together um, with a great team over there. It is a single center study. Um, we did a um, 300 patient study aiming at imaging the patient uh, at index and then repeating the imaging at 12 months. And we wanted to test the um, effects of rosuvastatin in the coronary of those patients um, by means of using uh, intravascular ultrasound mainly, but uh, particularly with the use of the radiofrequency analysis, um, which is also commercially um, called virtual histology, and also with another catheter, which is um, uh, the NIRS catheter, the TVC catheter. So we have a multimodality imaging um, study uh, in these 300 patients. And we actually image one of the non-culprit or non-target vessels in this population um, uh, for a segment a bit longer than 40 millimeters. Uh, what we have is, a, as a study population, a very broad spectrum of a coronary artery disease. Basically, we included patients from stable angina, unstable angina, non-STEMI, STEMI population. And that was kind of the um, study design. What did you find? You're presenting here as your final results. What we uh, had as primary endpoints is the change in necrocore um, as evaluated by uh, radiofrequency IVOS analysis. And for that particular endpoint, we found no significant change from baseline to follow up uh, when you would take the uh, necrotic core volume as the primary endpoint. And uh, similarly, uh, for another um, Key secondary point, which was the change in LCVI, which is a index measuring the amount of lipid in the coronary arteries, um, using this TVC catheter. So we also did not observe any significant change in the segment uh, study with, uh, with this catheter over the period of 12 months. Um, so what we, you, you could conclude is uh, two things, uh, I believe. On one hand is that rosuvastatin did not change the signal coming out of these um, two different imaging modalities, uh, which is very hard to accept, but that could be a real observation, or that, um, that the endpoints that we have picked for this study were particularly not the best that you could take for evaluating the effects of rosuvastatin. So there, there are like two angles. I mean, the whole concept was that the high-dose rosuvastatin would kind of dry out the vulnerable plaque and leave it less vulnerable, correct? That's correct. And actually, th there is actually uh, another element that I'd like to introduce here. It is the time of uh, follow-up. So we have only 12 months uh, follow-up when in previous study, another progression-regression I was studies uh, done in the past, the more traditional, let's say, follow-up for those is 24 months. Maybe. Another confounding factor here is that we are re-imaging uh, those patients very short after the intervention, which is only one year, and we could have may maybe waited um, another year to see um, whether we see more effect. But indeed, the uh, original hypothesis was that we, you would see a decrease in the amount of necrocore in the arteries of those patients. Thought it would make sense, and we know that people respond to statins. The the risk drops pretty dramatically fairly soon after starting statin That's therapy. Correct. So That's there is correct. something happening, and it's it's even before you end up with with LDL changes, you get an effect with statins quickly. And this was maybe one of the things we were hoping it was going to be. 
That's correct, and, 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 and you are definitely right when you look at clinical outcomes. And here we were coming more uh, with a mechanistic study trying to, right. to support why you would have such a um, dramatic effect in, 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 in reduction of clinical outcomes. Uh, but with this setup, um, we did not um, prove that point, and we have listed uh, some of the potential confounders for this study. Now, you have a second paper here that's just taking a look at IBIS-4, uh, IBIS and virtual histology results. So just when you, when you take a look at that whole package, what did you find? Yeah, so that's very interesting because IBIS-4 um, is another multimodality imaging study. Uh, in this uh, case, the study design is a multi-center study. It's done in uh, STEMI patients, so you treat the culprit artery, and then what we did is to image the stented, the newly stented uh, vessel and the other two vessels from the same patient. So the full coronary tree was imaged at baseline with two different imaging modalities, virtual histology, but also optical coherence tomography. And we gave to those patients also rosuvastatin 40 milligrams for a period of 13 months in this case. And we repeated in the three coronary vessel of those patients, um, OCT and virtual histology. So the observations from that study is, um, as uh, necroic core being the primary endpoint uh, for the radiofrequency analysis, we did not observe any change similarly to the EV3 findings right. um, in this post-STEMI um, population. Um, however, very interesting, and we also discussed it in this meeting, were the OCT findings. So in OCT, what we were interested in was to measure the change in the thickness of the fibrous gap because of the resolution of the imaging modality being about 10, 15 microns, uh, we were able to capture these small changes occurring over time in that fibrous cap. So we observe a thickening of the fibrous cap making or suggesting uh, a, a less vulnerable those spots. And also we observe a reduction in the angle of lipid pool as assessed by optical coherence tomography. And maybe a unique finding um, in this setup is the fact that we measure the accumulation of macrophages at index and then repeat that um, um, OCT analysis at the follow-up and observe a reduction in the accumulation of macrophages in the vessel wall of those patients. So you could say so far, taking EV3 and EV4 together is that we with one year treatment of rosuvastatin, we did not change the amount of necrocore present in those vessels, but when you would use um, the uh, optical coherence tomography, be, might be because of the resolution of the imaging modality, we observe a significant changes in the thickness of the fibrous cap, reduction in the uh, lipid pool, and also reduction in the macrophage accumulation. A few years ago, some of the great minds of this uh, area seemed to suggest that, you know, don't concentrate on the vulnerable plaque, concentrate on the vulnerable patient. Your results here seem to argue in support of that exact same thing, correct? No, I, I, I am also a strong believer of the vulnerable patient concept, although we are focusing our imaging results in, in, the, uh, in the serial observations at the plaque level. However, you know, as a whole, what we are interested is in imp impacting the patient level results and not much just focal changes in the vessel wall that may not have any clinical impact. So, so yeah, so while we use this imaging to, and these mechanistic studies to explain some of the observations we have ever made in, in large clinical outcome trials, doesn't mean that we are obsessed by imaging the, the vulnerable plaque. So you think there is still a role to understand better the vulnerable plaque? There is a role because when you see this dramatic, you, you alluded to that, when you see this dramatic uh, reduction in cardiovascular events after the, um, the starting with the, the treatment with the statins, so you need to come up with some explanation as why exactly. that is happening. And uh, one way to do that is by imaging the actual plaques that um, are being treated. 
Uh, but that's not the only way. So you have some other uh, biomarker um, assessments and genetics assessment and many others that are now ongoing um, in, in larger trials as well, uh, assessing whether those changes in all those areas would impact or explain this reduction in cardiovascular outcomes in these statin trials. So, so it's, it's, we are just coming with one piece of the puzzle and trying to contribute to that whole discussion to better understand in which way we are impacting the, the, the cardiovascular outcomes of our patients. So are you going to continue looking at this issue? Definitely. So we, we are obsessed about the imaging, intravascular imaging, and, um, and with newer techniques like uh, optical coherence tomography, the level of detail that we are getting out of these vessel walls is getting to the microscopic level. So the resolution today is 10, 15 microns, but the new developments in that area is, uh, as they call it, the micro CT, is getting us to five microns, which means what you see on the, the microscope. So you insert the same catheter, but what you get out are leukocytes adhered to the vessel wall, platelets, and, and all the beauty uh, of the cholesterol crystals, you know, with a oh, yeah. superb resolution. So, so we are going to continue if, um, if funds are there and uh, we get sponsorship for, for our research, where we believe we are contributing again with one piece of the puzzle. Right. Well, congratulations. It's fascinating. And uh, if you, if you look, do look at this some more, please come back and talk to us again. For sure. Maybe we should make an appointment for next yeah, exactly. year. Exactly. Come in CRT. <laughs> I like that idea. And speaking of CRT, all our coverage of that is online, as you can see, and it's also in CardioSource World News Interventions. Please check out there where I am Executive Editor Rick McGuire.